friends. Uh, if you do not know me, my name is Tessa. I run a comic and gaming store that currently has two locations. I have been professionally cleaning and pressing comic books for about five years now. I was messing around a bit before doing it professionally. Yeah, I do have a solid list of clients. I clean and press hundreds of books every single month. I specialize in silver, bronze, copper, and gold and stuff. Modern is a little less my jam. Uh, still good, but yeah, silver and gold stuff is primarily my area of specialties. This video is pretty much just for people who just want to get started, who haven't really touched anything yet and are just really interested or maybe want to know the very basic tools. This is not an in-depth how to clean books. If that's what you're looking for, I will be posting something like that later. This is literally just cleaning tools 101, the basics. If you've never done stuff, this is the great stuff to just grab and try. I do have more intense tools. I probably have somewhere between 75 and 100 unique items that I use. Uh, I don't use every single thing on every single book, obviously, and there are some things I don't use very often at all. These are two baskets full of stuff I use on a pretty regular basis. That's about 45, 50 things in there. But I'm only going over the basic things that I feel like you can play around with without really worrying about damaging your books. For the next time I go over tools, I will go over more intense things that are really good and really solid, but you have to be more careful with and maybe have already been playing around with stuff for a little bit to feel really safe with it. In the next video, I will be going over how to actually use these on a book in process. We'll go over before and afters and actually show you in depth how it looks to work on these on books. Before I get started showing you anything, before you even think about grabbing anything for pressing books, uh, I do have a few things I really wanna just nail into your noggin first. No matter what, clean your hands. If you use gloves, if you don't use gloves, if you're ever touching books, just clean your hands, clean them real good. And make sure the surface you are placing your book on is a flat, even, clean surface. If you are putting a book in the press, please clean it first. Even if it is not an in-depth clean, please wipe it down. If not, you are just gonna be pressing indentations into the cover and through the pages of the book, and you're basically just cooking all the dirt into it. But even if you're not cleaning it, just wipe it down. You should wipe down your book before you clean it. You should wipe down your book before you put it in a press. You should wipe down your book before you put it in a bag and board, because if there's a piece of grime on there and you shove it in a bag and board and let it get pushed in your short box between 150 other books, you're just gonna be smashing something into it, and it's not a good look. Okay, so. You want to clean books. You got a bunch of books, whether it's just a hobby and you just want your own personal books to look better, or if you're even looking into making this your own profession, there's some things you should do first. Uh, you should definitely be working on books that you don't care about that aren't expensive first. You should go into a dollar bin and you should try to get books from a bunch of different eras. Try to get some silver, try to get some bronze, copper, try to get some new stuff. Grab a bunch of different stuff because the different inks and papers used on different ages of books are all different and then they interact with the things that you are putting on the book and eventually when you're putting them in the press different temperatures it interacts with all of that differently and also uh this is one of my hot takes that people do not like when you are cleaning and pressing your dollar books that you do not care about go too far go purposefully too far with your tools so you realize what that line is because you want to figure that out when you're working on junk books you do not want to figure that out when you're working on a golden age batman book or if you're working on your first blade. All right, so first thing first is your workspace. Everything I talk about in here will be linked in my Amazon store in the description. You do not pay anything extra just because it's my Amazon store. I just do get a little bit of a kickback. So hey, if you ordered from there, thank you. I appreciate it. Most of it is stuff that is the exact brand that I use. And I tried to put out different versions of each thing if you want to buy in bulk. So it's like cheaper per, or if you just want to try a little bit and stuff goes out of stock so often. So I just tried to make sure that there were a few options for everything there. So the first two big things I wanna talk about are gloves and SRP or parchment paper. Now this is my big thing of SRP. Uh, I'm pretty small, honestly. Let me put this down. So that guy's pretty big. I believe it's like 2000. I would suggest getting the 12 by 16 sheets, which is what these are. Let's grab a book from the wall behind me. We're gonna grab this one uh, because I love books that have typos and errors and fun fact, Marvel two in one number one Someone typoed right here in the corner. It says Marvel 2 on one, which I think is really funny. This is about half the SRP. You could totally wrap it around, completely cover the book. So 12 by 16 is definitely the preferred size for me. I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary for cleaning. I prefer it. It is absolutely necessary for pressing in my opinion. I would never press a book without it, honestly. We're gonna talk about gloves. All right, this is a big hot take. People yell at me all the time about it. Uh, but archivalist specialist for paper in general, Agree with this. Let me just say that if you hate gloves, you hate the feeling on them, you don't like wearing them, you feel uncomfortable, don't wear gloves. If you do not feel comfortable touching your books without them, if they would make you feel so much better, 
Wear gloves. So when you're working with paper, gloves actually can get like caught on the paper basically. It's not really great to have something on top of your skin to be dealing with books. And if you were actually looking for a uh, restoration or color touch or anything like that, you shouldn't use gloves at all because you can't really feel it through gloves. It's so much easier to just feel it with your hands. That being said, um, when I'm working on books for a very long time, if I'm sitting there all day and I'm sitting there with my heater and I'm working on books for hours, my hand will get clammy or sweaty or whatever. So uh, wash your hands really, really good. And if you're not wearing gloves, clean your hands, you know, wash them real good. And then after a while, wash them again. You know, maybe in between books or maybe if you've been working on one book for a very long time, the oils are gonna build up on your hands. You're gonna get kind of sweaty or clammy the dust and debris from the books are gonna be on your hands, so just be diligent. When I'm working on books for a very long time, um, I only use nitro gloves. Nitro gloves all the way. I should say that I do pretty much use nitro gloves when I'm working on modern books, because it's so easy to get fingerprints on them. But again, area of specialties being silver, gold, bronze stuff. Uh, but when I'm working on them for hours at a time, I will usually uh, pull the Michael Jackson and only have a glove on one hand. Uh, so if I have my tools in my right hand and I have my hand touching the book sometimes, I will put the glove on my left hand and my right hand will be naked so that I can focus on using my tools and using the paper and not having any kind of barrier there to mess anything up. But yes, if you're gonna use gloves, nitro gloves, do not feel pressured to use gloves. I'm sure plenty of people are gonna yell at me, but I promise it's a paper archivalist thing. It's what people do. But that being said, just do what you're comfortable with. It's your books, it's your body, you know. Now, when you're setting your book down at your station, you're gonna have your beautiful SRP. I also put everything with boards. Now, I personally use treasury size boards with everything. I end up cleaning and pressing a bunch of magazine books, golden books. Treasury is the way to go for me, uh, especially if I'm putting in the presses of what goes beneath. Yeah, treasury size books are my jam. I will also use magazine pretty often, uh, especially when I'm working with stuff that is maybe silver, but definitely like bronze and newer. Um, this will go in between the pages. Uh, I really wouldn't suggest using like golden or silver boards unless you were only really working on like silver and newer books. I personally like the extra room, but do whatever you want. Uh, if you're only working on modern books, there's no reason for you to use treasury boards. They're so big. I didn't want to open up one of those guys. So I just grabbed a board because we're rebagging and boarding a collection over there. So I just grabbed a board from that stack and I will show you uh, the basis of how to do this for the book. Since Marvel 2-in-1 was such a great volunteer last time, we'll just use them again. Actually, this is a book that could really use a press. Maybe I'll use this one as an example to show at some point, so that'd be kind of fun to keep using the same book. But, hello pretty book, you can see, whoo, I could definitely use a press. Now, when I am working on the book and cleaning the cover, what I do is I take my board. This is a current board, uh, but again, I just grab it from the stack, pretend it's bigger. I put it in my SRP, and I just flip it right over to make some nice little board sandwich. And what you do is you open up that first page, slide this right in here, so when you're working on your book, you're gonna be working on it like this, so this is underneath. It keeps the cover way safer. These everything from being pushed into the interior pages, and you can clean the interior of a book. I'll happily go over that as well. And when I am working on a book, I also have it on one of the boards below it, so when I'm moving it around, I don't have to just be moving this comic on the surface, because that's just not great. It, it's fine, uh, but it's much safer to put it on the board and then just move the board. So when you're moving it around, you're just moving it like this rather than moving this on top of the surface that it's on. So it's not getting all scuffed up. I'm gonna do the same thing when I'm working on the back. I'll just put this on the back page. Also, when you are uh, getting ahead of myself here, when you are pressing a square bound book, please pretend this trade is a square bound book. Uh, you're gonna cut down your pieces of board to align perfectly with the spine when you're pressing it so that your square bound book doesn't go meow or meow. Uh, those are very technical terms and you will be tested on that later. Unfortunately, I am out of these right now, so I cannot show you an example, but it's a pretty normal household item. Uh, tissues are the perfect thing to wipe down your book with when you first get it. Make sure you are getting unscented, no lotion tissues, just plain cotton tissues. But seriously, the first thing you wanna do when you are getting a book is just wipe it down very gently. I also use cloths, little microfiber cloths. I prefer to use lighter colored ones so that I can see the dirt on the book, but this gets up so much stuff you would not believe it's absolutely mental. So this is my favorite hot tip. I haven't seen anyone do this. Most people use draft brushes uh, to remove various debris and then just like eraser shavings and whatnot from your book. I still use one for like wiping off my desk, uh, but they're a little more coarse uh, than what I really want touching books, honestly. So what I use is a nail tech brush. These are very soft. 
makeup brushes like that are really soft like this also work really well. But yeah, this is uh, so, so much kinder to your book. It is, it is so soft, so nice. It's not gonna scratch up anything at all. I've never seen anyone else do it. Um, I know it's not the manly option if that's something you care about, but 100% recommend these. I have this exact one in the store below as well as a few other options. But yeah, um, I love this so much. I'm so happy I started using this. It's also really like thick. You can see there's like, it's not gonna miss anything and I love it. It's also like four bucks or something. Um, again, I do have one of the draft brushes just to clean up my workspace when I don't care. And I'm just trying to push up a bunch of uh, gross debris and eraser shaving. So it's not bad to have one of those, but this is definitely what I want touching books at all times. Especially when you're working on brittle books. You ever have a brittle old book that has little tears and stuff in it? I, I never want to use a draft brush on them again. I hate it. This is so nice. It is so easy and it's not gonna hurt your book. Extremely recommend, it's my favorite tip. So this is one of my favorite tools that is not extremely uh, detailed, but it's great for just kind of like broadly working on your book. This is a drafting eraser. It's basically a little sack full of eraser shavings. Um, but what you do is you do this. Now the downside is this is extremely messy if you can't tell already. Uh, but basically you can just rub this on your entire book very lightly. I don't use it as often anymore, honestly. Um, I'll use it more on Golden Age books, but it is a, a very good beginner's tool to kind of learn how to do stuff because it's just not as intense. Anything you're putting on your book, you really shouldn't be like pushing down really hard and like scrubbing it. So this is really good to just kind of soft motions. And whenever using erasers or anything on your book, you should just be going in one motion instead of circles. Circles do remove things more. That does include color. But uh, whenever you're doing that, it's often much more likely that you will catch some part of the paper, whether it be a tear or just paper naturally moving and you'll scrunch it up. So you should just be going in one motion. I usually go away from the spine, but definitely away from the center, this poor book. You shouldn't just be going like this on the edge. It's so easy to catch things there. So I usually like to just move in the opposite direction. Maybe in the spine area, I will go back and forth like this. But yeah, definitely away from the center towards the edges, I should say. A super easy tool that I absolutely adore. It's really good on those really grimy books you get, especially like gold and silver books that are just really kind of gross. Uh, just little cotton pads, makeup removers. Make sure that they are plain, they're naked, they're not scented, there's no lotion, there's no chemicals. Everything you're putting on your books should be as plain as possible, very boring. You're, think of your books as like the eight-year-old who doesn't want any ketchup, it doesn't want any salt, it wants everything plain, all right? I also really like using reusable ones. Uh, again, I prefer to get the lighter ones or the white ones, even if they're double-sided. Um, I just use the lighter side so you can see everything coming off your book. Reusable is usually cheaper in the long run, and these, are very good for working on your books, but I mean, it is cotton. Yeah, you can tell it's got all these little fibers, so they will come off uh, and it, it's messy, it gets on your books, you know, so. So these guys are actually uh, replacements that I got that I don't really like that much. Uh, so I got them in a little three pack. Uh, they're little like thin metal ones and I thought that I would like how thin and like malleable these were, but I was wrong. Uh, I do not prefer these. I like the plastic ones much more but these are really great little, uh, they're stencils, but they're really great little eraser guards. Uh, this one also does not have as many thin lines as I liked in my previous one. So if for some reason you are interested in this specific kind, I do have this specific one, I believe in the three pack uh, linked below. But I also have plastic ones that I do prefer. Um, I do prefer these smaller ones. I did put like a paper size one down there if you wanna try it, but I prefer these like smaller ones that I can move around. I also just end up using the edge a lot. Yeah, I, I was really interested because I thought that this would be really good to go along with the paper. I kind of hate it. It's really thin. I feel like it is just a dangerous game to play. Um, but still, uh, just having thin areas to work with the eraser if you're scared of getting with color and you just want to get like a specific line of paper. I really like it, especially for like very small areas using these little spaces. Yes, in idea, I very much recommend these, these specific ones. Not so much. Uh, definitely going to go back to my plastic ones. Now, people love to talk about erasers on their books, so I'm definitely gonna hit on some of those today. One of the easiest things to use that are extremely beginner friendly are just these white polymer pencil caps. They do work better once you get past the first exterior layer. Uh, so I usually use them once they're more like worn out nubs. I use them on more broad areas and then I'll use the sharper bits towards uh, very sharp corners. I do have specific brands that I think perform better than others. I prefer Helix and Pentel a lot, super easy to use. Uh, you can really work on these in white areas. If you're trying to work in colored areas, when you're working in colored areas, yellow and red are the scariest. Um, obviously, 
black isn't great either, but yellow just like removes so easily. Uh, red removes so easily. Yellow lightens, I should say, but red is just, it's not good. Uh, when I'm going over more intensive methods, I will go over how to go over color in better ways. These guys are so beginner friendly. You can get them in huge packs. Really like them. I have a few options down below if you're just trying to do a few books and you know, just grab a small pack, but they're pretty cheap. Like I buy them in bulk. I like to keep my fresh new baby ones in a separate container from like my worn ones because my worn ones are still very usable. But uh, you know, I need to know what I'm grabbing. Uh, you should be trying to keep these clean. You should be trying to keep all of your materials as clean as possible when you are touching you know, delicate paper that's decades old. These are some of my eraser pens. I do have more. Um, I do have some currently at my station, honestly, that I was not picking up. But I wanna go over some of my absolute favorites. So I think 100% one of the best ones around. Statler, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This is the brand name. And I do have these all below. Um, I love this brand so much, I have a few. But this one, you can see what I've done, is I've cut it into a sharp edge. Clearly I was using it, so it's still a little dirty. I've not cleaned it off yet. Um, but you can cut these very easily. You just make them really sharp. Make sure your knife is clean, make sure everything's clean, but make sure your knife is clean. Cut it off into a straight line. And these are so good. I like to make them into like thin points and then you'll just go over your book and it is, they're so nice, I love them. And then this one was not into a point. This is kind of my nubbin one I was using. This is a Pentel one. I really like Pentel. I just like their, their formula a lot. It's really good for working on a book and not feeling, it's just not very abrasive. It's very soft. Um, so I really like working with this one, uh, especially when I'm not working on little corners. I also like getting these really, really small ones. So this is a Tombow. It says Mono Zero. I'm not sure what size it is. Um, it is impossibly small. Now, whenever you're using these eraser pencils, just make sure it is not running out while you are doing it because you don't want to just be like shoving harsh plastic onto your book. Um, it's easier to tell with these that that's not happening. Harder to tell with these. Now, see how tiny that is? Very tiny. So yeah, the downside is this is metal. So if you run out, then you're just scraping metal on your book. That's a no-no. But this super, super, super tiny area is absolutely perfect for detail work. It is scary because, you know, it's a tiny thing you're going into detailed areas. If you're just starting, don't feel like you have to go super detailed. But it is all the little things that add up to making a book just look gorgeous. You do have to be really careful when you are using any kind of erasers or anything like that on books because you can remove anything that is on the book. Obviously you want to be removing dirt and debris and various grime and maybe gross old food and boogers that are on there, but you can also be removing color and you can also be removing gloss, which is really easy to remove. So you have to be very careful and very gentle. Now, when you are working on stuff for the very first time, I suggest taking really good before and after pictures because then you can kind of see what you've done, what you would like to do better. Things, it'll, it'll make you realize more what actually are cleanable and pressable defects once you get to that. Uh, it's also really fun in the beginning to be able to look at a book and be like, dang, like I did that. Highly suggest before and after pictures. You can post your stuff on you know, Instagram if you're trying to curate your own business. That's a really good way to kind of show clients like, does your book look like this? Oh yeah, I can make it look like this. If you do end up posting before and afters or tools that you've got, please tag me. I would absolutely love to see it. My Instagram is Tessa is a nerd. Other quick things you can use are Swiffer dry pads. Make sure you get the unscented kind. I know I'm just saying that about everything, but make sure you get the unscented kind. There's like pretty lavender ones and stuff, ignore it. Um, but just these Swiffer dry pads. I like to cut mine up. I think it's much better. Like they, they come, it's for a Swiffer. It comes on these big pads, cut them up, use them on books. Um, I will even use like, when I say I use pens, I take out the, the ink in the middle. So there's no, no chance of putting a pen mark on your book. I always suggest that. But I will even use a pen to apply pressure. This is a magic eraser pad in here, but that is definitely not for a beginner. Uh, I would also suggest not getting a magic eraser if you are doing this for the very first time, just because they're really abrasive and it is literally just cutting away the comic. Uh, it is a great tool and it is fantastic to learn to work with, but this is day one, nice gentle things that can make an incredible difference on your books already. The Swiffer dry pads are out of stock a lot uh, and that's why I don't have one to show you right now. I'm gonna have to just go on Amazon and get mine, but down below that's why I put several different versions of it in different bundles because it goes out of stock a lot, but it's really great. Uh, do not reuse those constantly. Anything that is just like non-reusable cotton and stuff like that, you should not be constantly using on your book. I usually clean a few books at a time. So while I'm sitting there cleaning, maybe I'll use like this half of the cotton round on one book and use this half on the other book. Depends on how dirty they are. But after that, I will toss it. 
Same with your swiffer pad, and that's why I cut them up. You just cut out a little square, maybe like two inches by two inches or something like that. Use it on your book, toss it. Uh, otherwise, you're just gonna be smushing dirt onto the next book, so. The X-Acto knife is your friend. Um, my X-Acto knife broke, because I'm a dummy, so I do have my little pocket knife up here. Uh, but knives end up being a really great tool. Use them to cut up abstrain pads, use them to cut up your swiffer pads, magic erasers, use them to cut off, that's a pen. Use them to cut off your erasers. Even when you're using uh, actual erasers, cutting them into the points that you want is, is such a lifesaver. Having sharp edges, having clean points, it's amazing. Uh, knives are your friend, so I definitely recommend just having one in your toolbox. And on the terms of erasers, before I go over a basic one or two you can try, um, I would definitely suggest messing around the pencil ones first. You're using your hand, really, like with pencils, the same way you would write something. So it's something that comes more natural to you and it's easier to figure out how much pressure you're applying and it's smaller. So I would suggest playing around with those a little bit first. But last things I wanna talk about with erasers before I show you a few types I really like and I will show you more in the next video for more intermediate uh, cleaning. All right, one of my favorite genuine full-size erasers to use is the Moo eraser. Uh, this guy's really cool. I'd usually end up cutting my erasers into different sizes as I'm using them. Uh, but this guy is really cool because as you're erasing, it does not create eraser shavings. It pulls into like one piece. It's more of like a plasticky eraser. Um, some of them like foam ones, but this one is really good and I think it is pretty beginner friendly for that reason. Um, just be really gentle and only work with this in like larger areas, I would say. Start off in light sections. I do also really like this Mr. Pen one. Uh, this is one that I really like using in white areas, especially in very large sections. Um, this is one that I won't even cut up that often because I will just use this. I will just use it, you know, in these back areas here. And when you are first starting, and even when you are not first starting, you've been doing this for years, because this is something I really have to drill into my noggin. Not everything can be fixed. Not everything can be cleaned away. Not everything can be pressed away, and that's okay. You are working with paper that was meant to be pulped for the war. You are working with things that were sold in a newsstand to an eight-year-old, thrown in their pocket, and was meant to be thrown away. The fact that we still have them, it's amazing. These are pieces of history, and the fact that it's here at all is amazing. The fact that you can still read them, the fact that the colors are so vibrant, the fact that you can still flip through these things and read them and touch them, it's amazing. So it's okay if not every book is going to be a 9-8. It's okay if not every book is gonna be an eight or a five or even a two. It's okay if your books are incomplete and coverless. Just be happy that they're here, honestly. And the fact that we can make them present more like they did possibly decades ago, it's kind of an amazing, beautiful thing. And I would really love to eventually sell kits. Um, I would love to have like beginner, intermediate, and more specialized kits at some point to be able to sell um, and just have like a little bit of each kind of material in there so you can play around with and also throw in some books that would be really good to work with. That's something I would love to get to this year. Might be next year, but we'll see. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm moving very soon, so it kind of depends on that. But in my next video, I will either be going over intermediate tools or I will be going over exactly the process of using these on a book. I think it'll be really fun if we can uh, clean a book together. I'll do a few examples of before and after and what exactly I do on a book. I do have a lot of other tools, a lot of other things to use. This is, you know, I have, I have tons of stuff. Yeah, just beginner stuff. Just go gentle and I want you to beat up every single dollar bin book you can first. Just find really gross ones. <laughs> If you would be interested in Kit, please let me know. If you try this, please let me know. If you try any books, uh, post about it, tag me. I would love to see your work. I have links to everything down below in the description. I have a little Amazon store, and this is just the beginner cleaning tools. I will make a different list for each video so that, you know, if you are just trying to get basics and just dip your toe in, you're not gonna find stuff. That's a little more advanced. Let me know what books you're gonna experiment on. And I'll see you next time where we uh, actually touch books and use them and maybe go over some other tools. As always, thank you so much for watching. And also thank you so much for a thousand. Uh, I'm gonna do some kind of giveaway soon. I just didn't think it would happen that fast, so I haven't planned it. But uh, I will definitely be doing some kind of giveaway very soon. Uh, I might have to wait till I move, I'm not sure, but I'm very excited and I'm very, very thankful and I love you very much. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much for watching, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one where we can clean the book together. All right. Bye, friends.